All right, DBC youth. We are on our third video in the Jonah Bible study series. If you've missed the first two, go back and watch those so you know where we are in the story and you're not confused, okay? So picking up here after Jonah has just told the sailors he's running from God and the God he serves is the God of the land and the sea and he's trying to run from him on the sea. So the sailors are freaking out. They're like, that's really dumb, and this is not working. So they're about to ask him what they should do. Okay, so verse 11. So they said to him, this is the sailor said to Jonah, what should we do to you that the sea may become calm for us? For the sea was becoming increasingly stormy. He said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that on account of me, this great storm has come upon you. Oops. Go back there. And they put a big old rectangle here around that because that's going to be important. Verse we're going to come back to. <clears throat> verse 13. However, the men rode desperately to return to land, but they could not, for the sea was becoming even stormier against them. So these pagan sailors are showing love to Jonah, right? They're sacrificial love, really, because they know it's Jonah's fault that this is happening. And they're still. <laughs> Not, they're still trying to not kill him, okay? I got Car Carter with me, so you hear some little squeals. It's not me, I promise. He's helping me out. So they're here trying to still save Jonah's life. It doesn't work. So we go to verse 14. Then they called on the Lord and said, and remember, we've talked about this in youth quite a bit, but when you, in the Old Testament, when you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord, that's the translation of God's personal covenant name. Yahweh, okay? So they call out to Yahweh. Remember, these pagan sailors had just been praying to their false gods. Now they're calling out to Yahweh, and they say, we earnestly pray, O Yahweh, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not put innocent blood on us, for you, O Lord, have done as you have pleased. So they picked up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. All right, so Jonah was right. And what we're, that's actually, this is kind of a side note here, but this is going to go on throughout the story, is that everything Jonah says is true, okay? So Jonah's theology is spot on, but his actions do not match the theology that he claims to believe, okay? And that's what we're going to see throughout the story. Verse 16, so after that happens, the sea stops, the, the storm stops. Verse 16, then the men feared Yahweh greatly, and they offered a sacrifice to Yahweh and made vows like to, to the Lord. So you have these, these sailors, these pagan sailors who were just worshiping and, and praying to false gods in the story. And now they have turned from that and they are worshiping, they are calling out to, they are praying, fearing, offering a sacrifice, making promises to the true God. They are now worshipers of Yahweh. Okay, now I want you to understand and see the irony of this, okay? and see how God is sovereign over, over this whole story. Jonah is running from God's call to preach God's word to pagans, right? To a pagan city, Nineveh. He's running from that call. And the very first thing he does is tell a boatload of pagan sailors who Yahweh is, and then they convert and worship Yahweh. So the very thing he is running from doing, he does, right? So God is able to accomplish his purposes, even in Jonah's disobedience. And that brings up an important point I want to briefly touch on here. Go to this next page. And I was, um, I was taught this, and I saw this by a, a biblical scholar named Joanna Hoyt. She's a Hebrew scholar. She's actually a professor at DTS, but she pointed this out to, to me in, in, in her commentary on Jonah and how this works out in the story of Jonah. This works out through the whole biblical story, okay? And that's that God makes good out of evil. But this is an important distinction. distinction. God does not make evil good, okay? So we talked last week how Jonah's disobedience, his sin, had communal uh, consequences. It wasn't just his individual consequences. It affected a community. It affected other people. So that's true, right? So just because God can make 
good out of evil doesn't excuse our evil or our sin or disobedience, okay? But we do serve a God who makes good out of evil, a God of resurrection, okay? But that does not mean that God makes evil good. So that's an important distinction. Sorry, Carter dropped his passy, so I don't want him to cry in the video. Here you go, buddy. Okay, so that brings me back to here, and I, what I want to focus on real quick is this verse. Okay, and this is where we're going to start seeing some connections to Jesus and how this story points us to Christ and how Jesus is the greater Jonah, okay? Because Jonah here in verse 12, he, what he's doing here, he's not repenting, okay? He's, he's not repenting. Like, if he was repenting, he would do what the sailors are doing in verses 14 and 16. They pray to Yahweh. He hasn't prayed to Yahweh. He'd offer a sacrifice. He'd make a vow. He, he, he'd pray. He'd call out. He'd repent. He's not doing that. What he's doing is he's still trying to run from God and God's call to preach to Nineveh. But because running is not working, now Jonah is going to kill himself. So Jonah, and this is where we see a really important comparison to Jesus, but Jesus. The comparison with Jesus and Jonah is, is a sharp distinction because Jonah would rather die than preach God's word to his enemies. But Jesus does die willingly for his enemies. And so his enemies can know God's word, they know the gospel and believe in him. All right. So I want you to see that really sharp distinction between Jesus and Jonah. Let me clear all this here. And we're on a time clock here, mainly because Carter's, he's, he's about to lose it. <laughs> but here, the last week I left you with this, I left you with a question about how, um, how Jonah's story is, com how there's a comparison to another char character in scripture who's like, who's a prophet like Jonah, but a, someone who's greater than just a prophet. And it's a typical Sunday school answer. I don't know if you got it or not, but it's Jesus. Okay. So I want to compare Jesus's story of calming the storm and Jonah's story, and it, it, we're going to see that this really shows us a lot about who Jesus is, his identity, okay? So, you see both, there's these great storms in both stories. This is from the Gospel of Matthew. Both Jesus and Jonah are asleep, and both had some people come to him. Here in, in Matthew, it's the disciples, here's the captain, and they, and, they, and they ask desperately for help, okay? Save us, Lord, we are perishing. So he wake, they wake up, you know, captain's like, uh, why are you sleeping to Jonah? Get up, call on your God. Maybe we will not perish. They're like, the disciples are like, Lord, we're perishing. So Jesus says to them, why are you afraid, you men of little faith? So even have this fear element connected here. Uh, then he got up and Jesus rebuked the winds and the sea and it became perfectly calm. So you have the calming of the sea that stopped, right, stopped its raging. And then in Jesus' story in verse 27, the men were amazed and said, what kind, this is the disciples, what kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? And the important point here is you need to see that in, the, in Jonah's story, it is Yahweh who is the one who, who is able to command the winds and the waves and calm the sea. So Matthew is purposely echoing Jonah's story because this question here is, is only answered by one, by one way, okay? What kind of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? This man is Yahweh. 